From Viking halls to the cities of the future, Terrain Buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsung Hub on beastsofwar.com. Hello everybody, my name is Thomas. Uh, I'm new here at Beast of War and today I'll be taking over the Hobby Lab studio here to show you guys how to convert models, to how to put them together, uh, how to pin them, uh, stuff like that, how to base them, simple stuff like that. We're going to start it simple and we'll see where we go from there. Um, today we're going to be working with uh, Butcher 3 um, for War Machine. That's the model with the two Arguses. Um, it's a really cool model. Uh, I really like it. Uh, it's really good in the game as well. Um, and we're going to see uh, if we can have some fun with it and do some special things with it. I started before you guys were here um, and I did uh, a bit with the bases. Um, they're the old style slotter bases, you know, with the little um, gap in between in, in it uh, to put the model in. But nobody's using that anymore. So I've already uh, put some tape on it to um, get rid of that uh, gap in the base. Next, um, the set has got um, two scenic bases put into it, which are these two, uh, one for one of the Arguses and one for the Butcher himself. Um, we're going to glue them on it. You see it's got, well, it's got a bit, so it fits perfectly onto the base like that and the other one for the butcher the same thing just put some super glue on it on the bottom and stick it on basically wherever you want it to be what i always found very odd about this set is that you get three bases and yeah what do you do now because they don't fit in with each other so you have to do something about it right so i've got me some decor plus here from Antenocity Workshop, uh, medium cork granules. Um, and we're gonna put some of it around the base because it uh, matches the rocks on the base from the Butcher and on the base from the Argus. So yeah, we're gonna put some of that on it. Usually you'd use PVA glue to do this, um, but since I'm not a patient person and I don't have time to wait for it and I don't wanna wait for it, I'm just gonna use super glue. Yeah, it's not the thing to do, but hey. You can do this the easy and the correct way and the um, controlled way, which is you um, selectively choose which part to put where. Or you can just dump a, stuff off, uh, a bunch of stuff on it and see where it goes from there. Yeah, I'm not a patient guy, like I said. I'm just going to put some glue on there, take some of this granulate and Put it on there. Some more. Like that. I've got to warn you guys beforehand that this is my way of doing things. Um, it's probably not the correct way. There's probably a better way to do it. Uh, there's probably a, yeah, some people will complain that I should be doing it like this or like that. Yeah, too bad. It's the way I do it. It works for me. So. That's a basic uh, idea of um, converting stuff and putting stuff together in another way. You just do it the way you want to do it yourself. So I'll take my hand out of the shot here. Like that. Just push a bit on it and it all comes off. Okay, we're gonna leave that to the side to dry a bit. The same for this one. Oops. So I've um, hit them with a bit of activa activator spray because uh, I'm not a patient man. Um, as you see, the bases are finished now. Um, they are a bit wobbly still because of the cork. One way to um, take care of that is take a bit of a super glue and just run it over the, um, over the cork uh, just like that. 
not too much because it will dry with a certain thickness um, and you will see it but if you just run some super glue over it what it's going to do it's going to bond them from the top and that way um, it won't uh, wobble anymore and will stay in place even better you can also do this with uh, watered down pva glue um, run it over the top um, it will be a bit more Elastic if you do that um, the super glue makes it a little bit more rigid uh, usually so like that And as the base is done mainly we're going to put them to the sides for now uh, The model is butcher 3. Um, it comes in a lot of separate parts These are the two biggest parts. He's got an axe um, He's got his hand He's got uh, the arm the right arm Put it like that. Put it like that, so you see where what's going. Parts of his army coat, army coat, and then some assorted uh, horn um, and some axes he chopped off. Some hapless guy. The first thing about doing anything is spinning, especially with big metal models. You always spin. Um, how do you pin? Really simple. You take a pin vise, like this one, um, and you take some brass rod, like this one. The important thing is, um, I always think, um, take a drill bit with the same size as a, as a brass rod. Uh, I take one millimeter because it's uh, small enough to be easy to drill and um, it's good enough to keep it uh, together, um, especially with a model like this that uh, does it fine. I've seen people using paper clips. You can do that, but to be honest, I think it's too much hassle because you never find paper clips with exact the same uh, width as the drill bit, and then it's not it's never really um, tight into the hole. So this, you've got a, a hole of one millimeter, you've got a brass rod of one millimeter. Those are exact measurements, so it's very tight uh, and it really sticks to uh, together. So that's the main thing you want to um, achieve, of course. Um, how do you do this? Um, it's pretty easy. You take um, the part, for example, here, where you want to drill, where you want to pin to go in, and you start drilling like that. This is a bit more difficult because here you've got a ball joint, well, not a ball joint, but a round uh, piece that should fit in there. Um, and it's often easy to get your drill to stick on that end. So a little tip, you take your hobby knife, just shave a little bit, tiny bit off of the top of that, like that. Maybe even with the head of your uh, hobby knife, you put a small dent in it. And then you get a small dent and the um, drill bit can will grip into that dent and it goes a lot easier in there. If you're not doing this, uh, the drill bit will probably uh, go all over the place and it will deviate from where you want uh, the hole to be. You put it in there. You start drilling. We're gonna do the right arm the same way. So here's the ball joints on top of, uh, well, on the shoulder. Just shave a little bit off. Put a small dent in it like that, and start drilling at it. Okay, same for the wrist here with the big X. Now for these kinds of connections, it is particularly important that you drill it beforehand because this one, if you don't drill it, if you don't pin it beforehand, it will come loose eventually. Um, and if it comes loose after you painted it, uh, it's really hard to put it together the same way and you're gonna have to uh, touch up the paint job again and you're gonna have to uh, get rid of the um, uh, glue where it was sitting uh, and all kinds of things. So you really don't want that. Let's see if I can put it in a shot here. Like that. Um, if you're assembling a model, uh, drill all the parts first. Why? Because if you glue something on and you start drilling afterwards, you are inevitably gonna break it off anyway. You're gonna break parts off if it's anyway, and yeah, that's never a good thing. So always drill the parts uh, first. We take the base back, 
and push, the, push these to the side, clean up the workspace a bit here. Uh, we've got two, um, two uh, places for the feet here, uh, and we're going to drill them as well, because yeah, that's where the pins have got to go. I got these this head, these two heads from uh, Justin and Warren that they had, uh, Brodos uh, have made these for them. Uh, so this is Justin's head and this is Warren's head. And they asked me to, well, if I could uh, in some way put uh, one of these heads on the butcher. So let's try how to do that. Um, the problem with this model is, as you can see, the head is uh, completely encased in armor here. So um, it's not just uh, a matter of taking the head off and swapping it for another one. It is, but uh, you have to be careful how to take it off. Um, first things first, you have to chop it, uh, the head off. I just take your clippers, put them on the heads. The problem with taking heads off and taking parts of miniatures off is that you don't want to ruin the detail around it. Do detail around it. So if you're clipping it, make sure that you don't touch any of this stuff, this stuff, this stuff. You have to you try to be to take it off as cleanly as possible. So it's a bit of seeing where to get like this. Apply some pressure. Do it in two or three times. Don't try to clip through it all at once. Like that. Until finally the head comes off. Like that. You see it's a pretty smooth joint, so that's a good thing to start with, uh, actually. I won't have to do too much to that anymore, which is a good thing. Um, next, um, to clean all of this up, you can do two things. Either the correct way to do, do it is with a hobby file. The problem I find with a file is that it's hard to control it and you always have to do back and forward motions and you tend to take off more detail than you actually want to take off. And yeah, I don't like that. What I'm usually using is my trusted Exacto blades. Um, I always use this uh, stuff. Uh, Probably because I uh, used to do some paper crafting and I yeah, get very used to using this one. Uh, it's an old one, uh, but I like it. Um, so yeah, I'm using this to do everything. Uh, it's not the best to do metal works, uh, but for plastics, for example, I much prefer this one to the files. Um, how to take it off? Um, you just start um, shaving it away. Don't try cutting through metal with this one because uh, you need a lot of force. You need to put a lot of force on it and that's always a bad thing to put too much force on it because um, then it can just um, cut through it at once and you're bound to take off a finger or cut yourself in a very bad way. Um, so always try to shave uh, little pieces off. Um, that's easier um, yeah, because the metal gives way uh, a lot easier. So yeah. Kids, don't try this at home. Ask for your parents to help you. We've got our model now, um, and we need to put the head on it. Um, so I'm taking Justin's head, and the first thing you always do with uh, stuff like this is you're dry fitting it, see how it will fit. As you can see, there's a, quite a bit of stuff I'll have to pray, uh, take off of it here on the bottom. Um, as usual with things like this, um, well, usually you try to do a dry run first and do it with some model that you won't be needing anymore. Um, since we don't have that anymore and, and have that at, its, uh, at this moment for uh, this beautiful head, um, just take it slowly at a time. Uh, take small pieces off uh, and keep fitting it on there, uh, trying if it fits, then take another small sliver off, uh, fit it again, until you're happy with the result. Uh, what you don't want to do is start cutting too much of it, because yeah, it's very hard to uh, put some of it back on, of course. Uh, and then you have to start using green stuff, um, and unless you're very comfortable with using green stuff, uh, it's always easier to take it slow at a time. Always put it down uh, if possible, and just cut down with your knife like that which is why you have a cutting method, of course. So I'm taking off a bit from the bottom, like that. 
and a bit more. Now we're going to see how it fits. Mm, should be a bit more. What also helps is taking the box uh, and comparing it with that. Uh, and you can get a feeling of where the head should sit uh, when compared with the box. Because uh, you can see how the original model was. And if you try to put your head the, sa the same distance in there, it's easier to see uh, how to do it. Well, to have a reference, mainly. Yeah, I think we can actually use it like that. Right? So we're going to glue it to the top of the head. Uh, and that's just a matter of putting a dab of super glue on it. Over there. Taking the head and gluing it on the way we want it. Like that. That's just in the bush, sure. Next thing is the uh, inserting the pins. So we take the brass rod. Like this, you run a bit of super glue on the end of it, like that, and just insert it into. the model where you want it to be. This is the part where you want some pliers, but you can push it, grab hold, grab onto the brass rod and push it into the model like that. I see that the head has come off. Like I said before, I'm not a patient guy. I should have waited for this to set, but settle, but yeah. Just put it back on. Like that. And give it a minute to cure. Okay. In the meantime, we're going to put the uh, brass rod in the other uh, parts. When you're choosing where to put a brass rod, always put it into the um, round bits, into the male bits. Um, it's easier to position it afterwards. Uh, if you put it in the female bits and you try to push this onto it, it always goes wrong. So always put it in the male bit first. I think that's got all the brass rods where it has to be. Um, yep. Yeah. So now we're gonna put it in, um, uh, on the base. Um, do the hardest parts first, uh, do the easier parts uh, afterwards because you can always damage the model or take the parts you've put on it already, uh, take them off again uh, if you're not careful. So. Yeah, always do the hardest parts first. Hardest parts, hardest part in this case is the base. Um, we're gonna slide this one in here. Like that, a little bit, until it goes far enough. Okay, taking it back out again. Then put the other foot in it, like that. Start the other one there for dry fit. Okay, that fits. As you can see, uh, we've got a gap here in the bottom. That always happens because uh, it's a metal model, metal model and uh, the metal expands a bit after it leaves the mold and so they can never get it to fit quite right. We'll solve that one with green stuff. Uh, you can start uh, bending the model and trying to fit it exactly uh, like it should be, but it's, uh, most of the times it's easier just to uh, do it with the green stuff. Okay, I'm going to take it out a little bit, not completely. I'm going to run a bit of super glue on the bottom of the shoe. See if I can get that in shot here on the bottom of the shoe and on the pin. Same on the other side, on the, on the other leg, on the bottom of the shoe and on the pin. And I'm pushing it in. It's important that when you do this, you're pretty quick about it because um, the super glue settles really quickly and if you do it too slowly uh, it can settle with the pin halfway through there and yeah you get problems because you have to remove the model completely you have to put a new pin in it and um, that's a lot of hassle so like this on the bottom we've got the little pin sticking out so I'm using a pair of clippers to clip it off for the base, we can do it two ways. Uh, either we just take the cork again and we put some in between there, which is probably the easiest way. So we're going to do that for one of the foot, feet. Run some super glue on there, like that. And take out a piece of cork. 
put it there like that again same thing yeah, that looks good um on the other boot we're going to try something different because this is to a tutorial and yeah, we want to try some different things um and we're going to try to do some green stuff on there to um yeah fill the gap just a tiny bit because i won't be needing much cutting it away okay this one can go to the side and then we start putting it all together and kneading it together the green stuff um, always leave a bit of water next to your working station if you want to do green stuff to wet your fingers because that keeps them from sticking to the green stuff the same, go the same goes for your tools uh, if you want to work with green stuff uh, always uh, make sure your tools are wet or use some vaseline on them uh, you got a green stuff here uh, just take a little bit of it roll a sausage from it and then we put it on the gap between the shoe and the rock and take your sculpting tool wet it you just push it in between there in first instance we're just going to push it in between there to make sure that it holds well and then in second instant we can well start to sculpt it later on i'm just going to put green stuff on around the boots first so that i don't um, mess up the green the um, stuff that i did before while i'm putting on the next uh, batch like that Like I said, keep them wet your tools to prevent them from sticking to the green stuff or from the, the green stuff from sticking to your tools, which is what happens most often. It's a rock, so yeah, as long as it looks rocky enough, you're fine here. Okay, that should do it. Take this out of here that you can see the boot. It should be. Okay. So that's the basic model done. Get the green stuff off my thumb, put it here and yeah, put it to a side. Maybe we'll need it later on, but we'll see about that. So next up is putting the cloak on the back of him. Always right fit it first. See if it goes well everywhere oh hold a sec i'm forgetting something as you can see he's got a big cloak uh, he's got um two cloaks on on him he's got a vest on him uh, a military vest and on top of that he's got a cloak um that's the cloak so we've got two of these yeah, skirt like things that we have to put on there first okay this is just plain gluing in the model in place so yeah, shouldn't be too special. It's always handy to take a little bit of green stuff and put it in between there, because that will um, yeah make a, uh, a much better fit uh, between the two. Uh, it will fill the gap, the tiny gap that there is between the parts. Uh, it will fill that, and yeah, it will make the fit. Uh, it will make it fit better, mainly. So, I'm gonna wet my fingers once again. I'm going to make a very flat piece of green stuff, extremely flat. Oops. And draw it out a bit, like that. And we're going to put it here in the middle of this, like that. Um, before I do that, sorry, I'm going to put a bit of super glue underneath it. Why is that? Because um, contrary to popular belief, super, um, green stuff 
does not uh, hold very well. It does when it is um, wet, it doesn't when it is dry. I've had numerous models um, that are falling apart because I just used green stuff to attach one part to the other part. So you should always put the green stuff on it and then, well, put some glue on first and then uh, put the green stuff on it. Like that. And then we're gonna press it against the other part. Because there's green stuff in between, you should always push it very hard and push it very well so that it fits and that you push the green stuff just in between the gaps and it gets out of the way where the metal parts would touch each other. We had a head of Warren, remember? Mm. We're gonna chop off the base. Like that. Okay. Um, and let's see if we can do something Hamlet-like. So if we put this head in here, like that, that should look nice enough, right? Like that, and put the head on the pin. Why am I doing this? Because, well, push it on the hobby mat to insert it even further. Why am I doing this? Because as you can see, from this hand, um, if I put the head on it, um, it's only got three points of contact. That's not enough. Uh, if I put it on it like that, it's gonna fall off eventually, and that would be a shame, of course. Uh, so with the little pin, I'm gonna pin it in here, in that part, in the palm of the hand. We're gonna obscure the pin with some green stuff, um, which will be yeah, parts of the neck hanging down or something like that. Uh, it is the butcher, so yeah. He's prone to snap when um, Warren tells him um, one too many joke or when he tells him what to do. Um, so the idea is Justin has just snapped. And this is what happens uh, if Justin snaps. So we're going to have a look where do we want it to be. Mm, if we want the head to be here, we're going to put it right here in there. I'm going to put a little hole in there. Okay, like that. Give the pin fits. Yeah, it does. Then we're gonna have a look here. How does that fit? Like that. Um, this is pretty good, I think, as you can see. But the head is a bit. Well, we're gonna fit it onto the model for a second. Because the fun part is if they can stare into each other's eyes, of course, uh, to make that classic Hamlet scene with the skull. At least I think it is a Hamlet. If it isn't, sorry guys. I think it's turning out pretty well. So I'm going to take it out, take my pliers, and very easily, gently ply it a bit. Like that. It's all just a matter of little nudges and little bumps and, and yeah, small things mainly, but it does make the difference. Um, let's see, like that, a bit more to the back. And then we've got this effect, which is pretty nice, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna open up this thumb a bit more. To do that, I've got some of these pliers, uh, which are flat, um, which is important because you don't want to, if you take pliers like these, for example, with the ribs on it, uh, you're going to take away all the detail and this is going to imprint into the detail. Um, there's less of a problem with these, but you have to use them very gently. If you uh, push too hard, you're going to um, damage the detail anyway. So I'm going to put it in here very gently and Ever so gently, just wait. Sorry, ever so gently, just slightly push the thumb away. It's all very subtle. It's all a matter of uh, millimeters and fractions of millimeters and, and everything you want, but it is important if you're working on such a yeah small piece of real estate. Uh, every little nudge can make a difference. So 
tiny bit of glue on there. Um, as you can see, I'm not putting any glue on the fingers of the hands. Um, why not? Because super glue has got a thickness. Uh, when it cures, it uh, well, it cures with a thickness. Uh, there's no other way to put it, and it can start to obscure certain uh, details, and we don't want to, that to happen, especially. Uh, for something like this, where the thumb is just gently holding the uh, severed heads, that would be a pity to obscure some of that detail. Okay, we're gonna take the hand off again, because that makes it easier to sculpt on. And we push it mainly, well, actually we just push it in between there. So you use the tool and just push it ever so gently. Whoops in between there. And there. And okay. And from this side as well. Especially for this kind of work, uh, Vaseline comes in handy because it um, can give you a very smooth finish on the uh, sculpting, which is a lot harder to do with uh, a metal sculpt with a metal uh, well, just a plain metal uh, sculpting sc uh, tool. What also what you, what you also can use um, are these kind of poly brushes. They are uh, made from a um, some kind of nylon, I think it is. Um, which means that the green stuff doesn't stick to it. Um, and what's more, it's uh, elastic, which means that you can get nice smooth finishes with it. And uh, it's really easy to sculpt with. It's a bit harder because you can't uh, put indents into the green stuff. Um, but I think it, yeah, it works better to finish uh, the model. So I always uh, usually start with a metal tool and finish it off with a poly brush like this. So that's the butcher done. Now we've got Justin done, we've got Warren done. I guess we need um, to do Lloyd and John right. Luckily we have two doggies here. It's the same deal here. Um, we're gonna pin all of it and we're gonna put them on a the base. Um, um, this is not a uh, just a round joint, it's more of an oblong shape that goes in between there, right? Um, which makes it a bit more difficult to see where exactly the pin should go. Um, what I usually do is I start with the male part of the joint, as usual, and drill that bit. A tiny pin, you put it in there. You cut away. As you can see, I haven't glued this one in. You cut it almost to the top like that, and you push really hard on it, like that. That way the little pin inserts itself into the female part here, and as you can see here, it leaves a mark, and that's the mark where you know that the other pin should go, that the uh, other holes should go. Yep, yeah, that's a pin out of there. I'm going to put a longer one in. Dial of super glue. Oh, yeah. That went wrong. Like that. And push it in with the pliers. Okay. Like that, that should do it. Okay, I'm gonna put that to the side. Um, we're gonna put it like that so that we can get a nice round motion in the model. That one's ready. Second one. Um, basically, it's the same process. 
Uh, I noticed I've um, made a bit of a mistake. Um, here's Butcher. Um, I actually forgot to put these three things on it. Um, so there's Butcher. And he's got still the horn and the Warjack helmet uh, and the. Well, I think it's a Warjack helmet or it's a. No, it's probably a um, Signor soldier. And a skull. You can never have enough skulls on a model. Um, so we're gonna put them on quickly. The skull should go here. I'm gonna try if my I can do it with my hands. No, I'm gonna use the tweezers. That will be easier. Butcher Justin with Warren. We've got Lloyd. We've got John. Right? Now, to make these more identifiable, I thought I'd have a bit of fun. I made two tiny things, like, yeah, how do you identify John? Well, you can always put a little tanky on the base. Right? This is something I just scratch built this morning. If you want to know how I did it, let me know uh, in the comments below, and I can always try to see if I can. Do a tutorial on that one. And for Lloyd, we need, of course, a dust walker to put on his base. So that's it for uh, today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jacks, arcane devices, and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on beastsofwar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on beastsofwar.com.